Analytic philosophy is a branch of philosophy that emerged in the early 20th century, primarily in the English-speaking world. It is characterized by an emphasis on clarity and argumentative rigor, often employing formal logic and linguistic analysis. The movement began as a reaction against the more speculative and less precise methods of traditional philosophy. Gottlob Frege is considered one of the founding figures of analytic philosophy. His work in logic and the philosophy of language laid the groundwork for many subsequent developments. Frege's distinction between sense and reference is a key concept in his philosophy. According to Frege, the sense of an expression is the way in which its reference is presented. For example, the expressions the morning star and the evening star have different senses but refer to the same object, the planet Venus. This distinction helps to explain how two expressions can refer to the same object while conveying different information. Bertrand Russell, another central figure in analytic philosophy, made significant contributions to logic and the philosophy of language. One of his most famous contributions is the theory of descriptions, which addresses how language can refer to objects that may not exist. For example, the phrase the current king of France does not refer to any existing person, yet it can still be meaningful. Russell's theory provides a way to analyze such phrases by breaking them down into logical components. This approach helps to avoid certain paradoxes and confusions in language. Ludwig Wittgenstein is another key figure in analytic philosophy. His early work, the Tractatus Logico Philosophicus, presents a picture theory of language. According to this theory, the structure of language mirrors, the structure of language mirrors, the structure of reality. In other words, sentences are pictures of states of affairs. Wittgenstein later revised many of his views in his later work, Philosophical Investigations. In this work, he emphasizes the importance of ordinary language and the ways in which language is used in various forms of life. Wittgenstein argues that philosophical problems often arise from misunderstandings of language and that careful attention to ordinary language can help to dissolve these problems. Logical Positivism a movement closely associated with analytic philosophy, emerged from the Vienna Circle in the early 20th century. Logical positivists sought to apply the methods of the natural sciences to philosophy. They argued that meaningful statements are either empirically verifiable or logically necessary. This view led them to reject much of traditional metaphysics as meaningless. Logical positivism had a significant influence on the development of analytic philosophy particularly in its emphasis on logical analysis and empirical verification. Formal logic plays a central role in analytic philosophy. The development of symbolic logic, which uses formal symbols to represent logical relations, has been a major achievement of the analytic tradition. Symbolic logic allows for precise and rigorous analysis of arguments, helping to clarify and resolve philosophical problems. The use of formal logic distinguishes analytic philosophy from other philosophical traditions that rely more on narrative and less on formal analysis. Analytic philosophy is often contrasted with continental philosophy, which includes various traditions such as phenomenology, existentialism, and critical theory. While analytic philosophy emphasizes clarity, precision, and logical analysis, continental philosophy often focuses on broader cultural and historical contexts. The differences in methodology and focus between these two traditions have led to distinct approaches to philosophical questions. Analytic philosophers typically aim for clear and precise arguments, while continental philosophers may employ more interpretive and critical methods. Analytic philosophy places a significant emphasis on the philosophy of language, considering it fundamental to understanding philosophical problems. The philosophy of language examines the nature, origins, and usage of language, focusing on how words and sentences relate to the world and to the thoughts of speakers. One of the central concerns in the philosophy of language is the theory of meaning. This theory seeks to explain what it means for words and sentences to have meaning. Various theories have been proposed to address this issue. One prominent theory is the referential theory of meaning, which suggests that words have meaning by referring to objects in the world. For example, the word cat refers to the animal cat. However, this theory faces challenges such as explaining the meaning of words that do not refer to any existing object like unicorn. Another important theory is the use theory of meaning, which was notably advanced by Ludwig Wittgenstein in his later work. According to this theory, the meaning of a word is determined by its use in the language. 
This approach emphasizes the practical aspects of language and how words are used in various contexts to convey meaning. Speech act theory, developed by philosophers J.L. Austin and John Searle, is another significant contribution to the philosophy of language. This theory examines how utterances can perform actions rather than merely conveying information. For example, when someone says, I promise, they are not just stating a fact, but performing the act of making a promise. Speech act theory categorizes utterances into different types, such as declarations, commands, and questions, and analyzes the conditions under which these acts are successfully performed. Bertrand Russell's theory of descriptions is a key development in the philosophy of language. This theory addresses how language can refer to objects that may not exist. For instance, the phrase the current king of France does not refer to any existing person, yet it can still be meaningful. Russell's theory provides a way to analyze such phrases by breaking them down into logical components. This approach helps to avoid certain paradoxes and confusions in language. Semantic externalism is another important concept in the philosophy of language. This theory, associated with philosophers like Hilary Putnam and Saul Krippe, argues that the meaning of a word is not solely determined by the mental state of the speaker, but also by external factors. For example, the meaning of the word water is not just a mental concept, but is also tied to the chemical composition H2O. This view challenges the idea that meaning is entirely determined by internal mental states. The philosophy of language is closely connected to the philosophy of mind, as both fields explore the nature of meaning, thought, and communication. The mind-body problem is a central issue in the philosophy of mind, concerning the relationship between mental states and physical states. Functionalism is a prominent theory in this field, proposing that mental states are defined by their functional roles rather than by their physical composition. This theory aligns with the analytic tradition's emphasis on clarity and logical analysis. Ordinary language philosophy is another significant approach within analytic philosophy. This approach, associated with philosophers like J.L. Austin and later Wittgenstein, emphasizes the analysis of everyday language to resolve philosophical problems. Ordinary language philosophers argue that many philosophical issues arise from misunderstandings of how language is used in ordinary contexts. By carefully examining the ordinary use of language, they aim to dissolve these problems rather than solve them through theoretical constructs. Analytic philosophy places a strong emphasis on the role of logic, science, and metaphysics. These areas are crucial for understanding the methods and aims of analytic philosophy. Logic is fundamental to analytic philosophy. Formal logic, also known as symbolic logic, uses formal symbols to represent logical relations and structures. This allows for precise and rigorous analysis of arguments. The development of symbolic logic has been one of the major achievements of analytic philosophy. It enables philosophers to clarify and resolve philosophical problems by breaking down complex arguments into simpler components. Symbolic logic includes various systems, such as propositional logic and predicate logic, each with its own rules and symbols. Propositional logic deals with propositions and their logical relationships. It uses symbols to represent propositions and logical connectives, such as and or and not predicate logic extends propositional logic by including quantifiers, such as all and some, and variables that can stand for objects in the domain of discourse. Predicate logic allows for more detailed and nuanced analysis of logical arguments. The philosophy of science is another important area within analytic philosophy. Analytic philosophers have made significant contributions to understanding the nature of scientific knowledge and the methods of scientific inquiry. One key figure in this area is Karl Popper, who proposed the criterion of falsifiability as a demarcation between science and non-science. According to Popper, a scientific theory must be falsifiable, meaning that it must be possible to conceive of an observation or experiment that could refute the theory. This criterion emphasizes the importance of empirical testing and the provisional nature of scientific knowledge. Thomas Kuhn is another influential philosopher of science. He introduced the concept of paradigm shifts to describe the process of scientific revolutions. According to Kuhn, Scientific progress is not a gradual accumulation of knowledge, but rather a series of revolutionary changes in which one paradigm is replaced by another. A paradigm is a framework of theories, methods, and standards that defines a scientific discipline at a particular time. Kuhn's analysis highlights the historical and sociological aspects of scientific development. 
WVO, Quine challenged the traditional analytic synthetic distinction, which separates statements that are true by definition from those that are true by virtue of facts about the world. Quine argued that this distinction is untenable and that our knowledge of the world is a holistic web of beliefs. According to Quine, no statement is immune to revision, and empirical evidence can affect even the most fundamental logical and mathematical principles. This view, known as holism, emphasizes the interconnectedness of our beliefs and the empirical basis of all knowledge. Metaphysics is another central area of analytic philosophy. Metaphysics deals with the fundamental nature of reality, including questions about existence, identity, and causality. Analytic philosophers approach metaphysical questions with the same emphasis on clarity and logical analysis that characterizes their work in other areas. One key debate in metaphysics is the realism versus anti-realism debate. Realists argue that there is a mind-independent reality that exists regardless of our perceptions or beliefs. Anti-realists, on the other hand, argue that reality is in some way dependent on our conceptual schemes, perceptions, or linguistic practices. Another important topic in metaphysics is the nature of properties and universals. Properties are the qualities or characteristics that objects have, such as redness or roundness. Universals are the entities that can be instantiated by multiple objects, such as the property of being red that can be shared by different red objects. Analytic philosophers have developed various theories to explain the nature of properties and universals, including realism, nominalism, and trope theory.